Welcome to this guide on the quests and lore of the Sunken Temple. I just wanted to mention before we get started that since this video is so long, I'll have timestamps for all of the relevant sections of the video in the description down below. Now let's get started. 1,500 years ago, an influential group of priests in the Gurubashi Empire summoned forth the avatar of the Blood God, Hakara the Soul Flayer. They called themselves the Hakari. Many converts joined the fold. In light of this newfound power, the Guru Bashi began conquering vast swaths of land, destroying all who stood in their way. The Zandalari tribe recognized the eventual threat they posed. Hakar was consuming all without rest. He would not stop. The Zandalari met with Guru Bashi rebels who were unhappy with Hakar's control of the tribe. They learned of the Atalai, Hakar's most zealous priests. They were planning to summon Hakar's body fully into the world, which would doom the planet. Horrified, the Zandalari and Gurubashi rebels attacked Zulguru and successfully defeated Hakar's avatar and most of his followers. However, some of the Atalai priests escaped the attack and fled north into the Swamp of Sorrows. They built a new structure, the Temple of Atal Hakar, to continue their worship and eventually resume their plans. They did not forget their loss, and vowed to get revenge on the Zandalari. They practiced their rituals in secret. However, their dark magic seeped into the swamp and twisted the plants and wildlife around the temple, which attracted the green dragon aspect, Ysera. She unleashed her power upon the temple, destroying its foundation and sinking it into the swamp. Ysera then ordered her green dragons to guard this new sunken temple to ensure that any rituals to summon Hakar would never happen again. And yet, her plan backfired. The sunken nature of the temple ensured that the Atalai could act undisturbed. The dark energies within the temple twisted the green dragon's connection to the Emerald Dream, locking them in a permanent nightmare. They now lash out at anything in a fit of madness. The sunken temple is located in the eastern Swamp of Sorrows. The minimum level to enter is level 45, the advised levels are levels 55 through 60. Within the Sunken Temple, there are six mini-bosses and nine bosses. The mini-bosses, Zolor, Gasher, Loro, Zolo, Mijan, and Huku, all drop Atalai Girdle, Atalai Boots, Atalai Gloves, Atalai Leggings, Atalai Spalders, and Atalai Breastplate. Onto the bosses, Atal Ilarian drops Darkwater Bracers, Atal Ilarian's Tusk Ring, and Head Spike. Jamalan the Prophet drops Gloves of the Atalai Prophet, Vestments of the Atalai Prophet, and Kilt of the Atalai Prophet. Ogum the Wretched drops Fist of the Damned, Blade of the Wretched, and Eater of the Dead. The Avatar of Hakar drops Bloodshot Greaves, Windscale Sarong, Featherskin Cape, Warrior's Embrace, Might of Hakar, and Spire of Hakar. Embrace of the Wind Serpent, the Four Dragons, Weaver, Dream Scythe, Hazaz and Morphaz all drop Drakefang Butcher, Nightfall Drape, Smoldering Claw, Bloodfire Talons, Dawnspire Cord, Drake Claw Band, Drake Stone, and Fire Breather. Finally, the Shade of Aranicus drops Dire Nail, Dragon's Eye, Horns of Iranicus, Crest of Supremacy, Rod of Corrosion, Tooth of Iranicus, and Dragon's Call. The Sunken Temple has three quests available exclusively to the Horde, three quests exclusively for the Alliance, and six neutral quests. Beginning with the Horde, the Sunken Temple starts with Witch Doctor Uzeri 
located in Camp Moache of Feralis, and ends with Marvin Rivetseeker in Tenaris. You will then receive the Stone Circle, which requires you to loot the Stone Circle from a chest in a house in Ratchet. The Temple of Atal Hikar starts and ends with Felzurul in Stoneard in the Swamp of Sorrows. This requires you to loot 20 Fetish of Hikar, which drop from any of the Atalai elites both inside and outside of the dungeon. The Temple of Atal Hikar is part of a quest chain with three previous quests, beginning with the quest Pool of Tears, also given by Felzurul in Stoneheart of the Swamp of Sorrows. Zapper Fuel starts with Liv Rizzlefix in Ratchet of the Barrens and ends with Larion in Marshall's Refuge in Ungoro Crater. This quest requires you to loot five Atali Haze, which drop from Merc Worms, Deep Lurkers, and Saturated Ooze inside of the instance. Again, this quest is part of a quest chain with two previous quests, beginning with Larion and Muigan, provided by Larion in Marshall's Refuge of Ungaro Crater. Moving on to the Alliance, into the Temple of Atal Hikar, starts and ends with Brohan Caskbelly in Stormwind. This quest requires you to loot 10 Atali tablets, which can be found outside of the instance. This quest is part of a fairly long quest chain, which begins with In Search of the Temple, also given by Brohan Caskbelly in the Dwarven District of Stormwind. Since this is such a long quest chain, it might be worth your time to just skip this one though. The Sunken Temple starts with Angelus Moonbreeze, located in Feathermoon Stronghold of Feralis, and ends with Marvin Rivet Seeker in Tenaris. Again, after completing this quest, you will receive the Stone Circle, which requires you to loot the Stone Circle from a house in Ratchet. Haze of Evil starts with Grogan Bone Spewer in Northern Feralis, who ends with Mugen in Marshall's Refuge of Ungoro Crater. This quest requires you to loot five Atali Haze, which drop from Murkworms, Deep Lurkers, and Saturated Ooze inside of the instance. This is part of a chain which has two previous quests, beginning with Muigan and Larian, given by Muigan in Marshall's Refuge in Ungoro Crater. Continuing on to the neutral quests, Jamalan the Prophet starts and ends with Atali Exile in the Hinterlands. This quest requires you to loot the head from Jamalan the Prophet, a boss inside of the instance. The Essence of Aranicus starts with the Essence of Aranicus, which drops from the Shade of Aranicus inside of the instance. To complete this quest, you must interact with the Essence font, which is in the back left corner of the same room. Into the Depths is the continuation of the Sunken Temple quests that were available to each faction. Into the Depths begins with Marvin Rivetseeker and ends with the Altar of Hikar. For this quest, when you enter the instance, go right down the stairs, killing until you get to the bottom. At the end of the corridor at the bottom, there will be an altar with two snakes on either side. You click the altar to turn in the quest. After you've turned in this quest, click the altar again to receive the follow-up quest. The follow-up quest is Secret of the Circle. For this quest, you must activate six snake statues in the correct order to summon a tall Alarian. The order to activate the statues is South, North, Southwest, Southeast, Northwest, Northeast. After you've activated the statues, you'll jump down and kill a tall Alarian who spawns in the pool in the middle. After he is killed, you will be able to interact with the certain statue in the middle of the pool to turn in this quest. The final quest, the god Hakar, starts and ends with Yakinya in Steamwheel Port of Tenaris. For this quest, 
you must use the ancient egg that is provided in the room for the avatar of a car to summon the boss and kill the avatar of a car. This quest is part of a quest chain with three previous quests, beginning with Screecher Spirits, also provided by Yakinya. I would advise starting this quest fairly early in your leveling, as one of the parts of the chain is inside of Zulfarak, which is covered in one of my previous videos. I would next like to cover the class quests in Sunken Temple. Since this will take quite a while to get through all of this, I'll provide links to the timestamps for each individual class in the description down below. Beginning with Warriors, you must first pick up the quest A Troubled Spirit from a class trainer in any major city. This quest will direct you towards Swamp of Sorrows where you will speak with the fallen hero of the Horde who is located at the path leading into the Blasted Lands. Talk to the Fallen Hero of the Horde and listen to his story to accept the next quest, Warrior Kinship. This quest will require you to go into the Blasted Lands and slay seven Hellbore, which can be found around the crater to the Dark Portal. After you've defeated the seven Hellbore, go back to the Fallen Hero of the Horde and pick up the next quest of the chain, which is War on the Shadow Sworn which goes back into the Blasted Lands to slay 20 Shadow Sworn Adepts, 10 Shadow Sworn Cultists, and 20 Shadow Sworn Thugs. After you've finished defeating all 50 of those creatures, head back to the Fallen Hero of the Horde to pick up the final step of this quest. The final step is called Voodoo Feathers, which is inside of the Temple of Atal Hakar. For this quest, you must loot two blue voodoo feathers, two green voodoo feathers, and two amber voodoo feathers. The two amber voodoo feathers drop from the mini bosses Gasher and Zol Lore. The blue voodoo feathers drop from Huku and Mijan. And the green voodoo feathers drop from Zolo and Loro. After you've gotten all six feathers, head back to the fallen hero of the horde to complete the chain. Moving on to Paladins, the first quest starts with Lord Grayson Shadowbreaker in Stormwind Cathedral. He will give you the quest Chillwind Camp, which sends you to Commander Ashlam Valorfist in Western Plaguelands, located in the south at Chillwind Camp. After speaking to him, you will pick up the next quest, which is Dispelling Evil, which requires you to bring 20 Minion Scourge Stones which drop from any of the Scourge mobs in the Western Plague Lands. You may already have these if you've been questing here already. After you have the 20 Scourge Stones, head to High Priest Theldanus at Uther's Burial, which is a little bit east of Chillwind Camp, to pick up the next quest, Inert Scourge Stones. He will give you the item Inert Scourge Stone and send you back to Commander Ashlam Valorfist. Head back to him and pick up the final quest, which is Forging the Might Stone. This quest is inside of the Temple of Atal Hakar, the Sunken Temple. Similar to the Warriors, it requires you to loot two each of the Blue Voodoo Feathers, two Green Voodoo Feathers, and two Amber Voodoo Feathers. The Amber Voodoo Feathers drop from the mini bosses Gasher and Zol Lore. The Blue Feathers drop from Huku and Mijan and the green feathers drop from Zolo and Loro. After you have all six of the feathers, head back to Commander Ashlam, Valorfist, to turn in your quest. Moving on to the Hunters, the Hunter's Charm starts with your class trainer in any major city. For this quest, you'll head to Azara and speak with Ogtink. He will then offer the quest Courser Antlers. This quest requires you to loot two perfect courser antlers from the Moss Hove Coursers. The antlers do have about a 10% drop rate, so it might take a little while to get them. After you have your antlers, head back to Ogtink, and he will give you the quest Wave Thrashing. This quest will require you to bring back six Wave Thrasher Scales, which can be looted from Young Wave Thrashers, Wave Thrashers, and Great Wave Thrashers. These items have about a 30% drop rate, 
so it should be a little bit faster than the antlers. After you have the six scales, head back to Ogtink to receive the final step of this question, which is the Green Drake. This quest sends you into the Sunken Temple to kill Morphaz and loot the Tooth of Morphaz. After you have the tooth, head back to Ogtink to receive your reward. Moving on to the rogues. This class quest starts at your class trainer in any major city. You'll pick up the quest A Simple Request. This quest will send you to look for Lord Jorak Ravenholt. He is in Ravenholt Manor, which is technically in Alteric Mountains, but is accessed via a tunnel that starts in Hillsbred Foothills. After you've found Lord Ravenholt, he will offer you the quest a Sealed Azure Bag, which requires you to loot a Sealed Azure Bag from Timbermaw Shaman in Azara. After you have the bag, you'll head to Archmage Xylem to hand the quest in. To reach Archmage Xylem, you must speak to Sanath Lim Yo, who will teleport you to the Archmage's Tower. The Archmage will then give you the quest Encoded Fragments. This quest requires you to loot 10 encoded fragments from various NPCs. These NPCs are Thunderhead Stagwings, Thunderhead Sky Stormers, Thunderhead Patriarchs, Thunderhead Consorts, Timberweb Recluses, and Forest Oozes. After you have the 10 encoded fragments, head back to Archmeg Xylem to receive the final quest chain. This quest is Azure Key. To do this quest, head into the Sunken Temple and kill Morphaz to loot the Azure Key. Once you have the key, head back to Archmage Xylem to collect your reward. Moving on to the priests, your quest is Scenarian Aid, which you will receive from a class trainer in any major city. For this quest, you will head to Azara and speak with Ogtink. Ogtink will then offer you the next quest, which is Of Coursers We Know. This quest requires you to loot four healthy Courser glands, which can be looted from Moss Hoof Coursers. These have about a 33% drop rate. After you have the four glands, head back to Ogtink to pick up your next step in the quest chain. This quest is the Icker of Undeath which requires you to bring him one Icker of Undeath. These can be looted from just about any undead mob all over the world, or if you'd prefer, you can just buy one off the auction house. Once you have the Icker, head back to Ogtink to pick up the final step in this quest chain, which is the Blood of Morphaz. This quest sends you into the Sunken Temple to kill Morphaz and loot the Blood of Morphaz. After you have the blood, head back to Ogtink to collect your reward. Moving on to the druids, you'll pick up your quest from any class trainer in a major city. You'll pick up Torwa Pathfinder. This quest will send you into Ungoro Crater to speak with Torwa Pathfinder. Torwa will then give you the quest Blood Petal Poison. This quest requires you to loot 8 Gorishi Sting and 8 Blood Cap. The Gorishi Sting can be looted from Gorishi mobs in the south of Ungoro Crater at their hive. These have about a 10% drop rate. The Blood Caps can be looted from small Blood Petal Sprouts located all throughout Ungoro Crater. After you have both of these items, head back to Torwa and receive the next quest, Toxic Test. This quest will provide you with a Devil Sore Barb and requires you to use the Devil Sore Barb on any of the Devil Sore mobs with an Ungoro Crater. After you've completed this, head back to Torwa to receive the final part of the quest chain, which is a better ingredient. This sends you into the Sunken Temple to kill a tall Ilarian and loot a Putrid Vine. After you have the Putrid Vine, head back to Torwa to receive your reward. Moving on to the Shaman, their quest chain begins with the quest Elemental Mastery, which is available from the class trainers in any major city. This quest requires you to get one each of Elemental Air, Elemental Fire, Elemental Earth, and Elemental Water. After you have all four of these, 
head to Bathra, the Wind Watcher, found in Alteric Mountains. He will then give you the follow-up quest, Deprecated Spirit Totem. This quest requires you to bring him eight bloodshot spider eyes and eight thick black claws. The spider eyes can be dropped from the Venom Mist Lurkers, and the thick black claws can be dropped from the diseased black bears, both found in the Western Plaguelands. After you have eight of each of those two items, head back to Bathra, where he will give you the final step of the quest chain, the Voodoo. This quest sends you into the Sunken Temple to loot two each of the blue Voodoo Feathers, green Voodoo Feathers, and amber Voodoo Feathers. The amber feathers are dropped from the mini bosses Gasher and Zul Lore. The blue feathers are from Huku and Mijan. And the green voodoo feathers are from Zolo and Loro. After you have all six feathers, head back to Bathra to receive your reward. Moving on to the mage, this class quest will start with your class trainer in any major city. You will pick up the quest Magecraft, which sends you to Senath Lim Yo in Azara. He will end the quest, but not give you a new one. To get the next part of this chain, take his teleport up to the tower with Archmage Xylem, who will give you the quest Magic Dust. This quest requires you to loot 10 Glittering Dust, which can be looted from the Blood Elf Surveyors and Blood Elf Reclaimers, which are found to the east of Xylem's Tower. Once you have your 10 Glittering Dust, head back to Archmage Xylem and pick up the next quest, the Siren's Coral. This quest requires you to loot 6 Enchanted Coral from Spite Lash Sirens. These can be found throughout the ruins of the Eldorath in the Bay of Storms. After you have your six coral, head back to Archmage Xylem to pick up the final quest of this chain, Destroy Morphaz. This quest requires you to enter the Sunken Temple and loot an Arcane Shard from Morphaz. After you have your shard, head back to the Archmage to collect your reward. Finally, on to the Warlocks. This quest will start with your class trainer in any major city. There, you will pick up an Imp's Request, which requires you to bring one fell cloth to Impsy in Fellwood. Impsy will then give you the follow-up quest, The Wrong Stuff. This quest requires you to bring him 10 Rotting Wood and 4 Blood Venom Essence. The Rotting Wood can be looted from Iron Tree Wanderers, Iron Tree Stompers, and Withered Protectors, all of which are located in the Iron Tree Wood in Fellwood. The Blood Venom Essence is looted from Tainted Ooze, which are located right around MC. When you have all of these items, head back to MC to receive the final step of this quest chain, Trolls of a Feather. This quest requires you to enter the Sunken Temple and loot two each of the Blue Voodoo Feathers, green voodoo feathers, and amber voodoo feathers. The amber voodoo feathers are looted from the mini bosses Gasher and Zul Lore. The blue feathers are looted from Huku and Mijan. And the green feathers are looted from Zolo and Loro. After you have all six of your feathers, you can head back to MC to receive your reward. That's going to wrap up this look at the lore and the quests of the Sunken Temple. Again, huge thank you to Minoru over on Barons.chat for allowing me to use his dungeon lore compendium for these videos. I'll link to his page in the description below where he has the lore segments broken up into 255 character paragraphs, making them the perfect things to share with your groups as you venture through Azeroth when Classic launches on the 27th of this month. As always, links to all the quests will be in the description down below. Please, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe for my next video where I'll be covering Blackrock Depths. Until next time, thank you all very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.